In today's video, we are exploring a variety of different sheep breeds that produce some of the warmest fleeces that go into making some of the coziest yarns. So if that sounds like just your cup of tea, get cozy and let's dive in. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. Today we're going to be diving into eight sheep breeds that produce some of the warmest fleeces so that we can know a little bit more about what to expect with those sheep breeds as it relates to our yarn for our knitting. Now, I did a lot of research for this particular video. A lot of that research was done online. However, I did use two books for my own personal library here to help supplement my research. And those two books I would highly recommend you have in your own fiber library. The first one being The Knitter's Book of Wool by Clara Parks. This is an excellent resource if you want to be able to have at your fingertips quick references for different breeds of sheep so you understand the characteristics of the yarn and you also are provided some example patterns, things that you can knit with that particular yarn. Another really great resource that I used for this video and that you could definitely have in your own personal library is the Fleece and Fiber Source Book. This is a book by Deborah Robeson and Carol Acarius fantastic book if you need to know more about the fleece and fiber that you use for this beautiful craft. I will link to both of these books down below in the description box. Highly recommend it. If you had to get one first, I would go with the Clara Parks first. It's just a much more approachable um, book to get you started down that fleece and fiber rabbit hole. And I love the variety of patterns that are included in there as well. Any additional resources that I used from the internet, I will link to those down below in the description box. Now, when it comes to looking for particular sheep breeds of wool that goes into producing cold weather yarns, some of the things that you're going to want to consider are sheep breeds that produce dense, warm and insulating wool. And topping my list of said sheep breeds is going to be one that you are very familiar with and can find in a lot of different places, either within the independent yarn market or even the larger scale yarn market. And that is the tried and true Merino. Originating in Spain, but now found everywhere and selectively bred for their wool quality, Merino wool is some of the finest and softest available. The Merino sheep is known for producing exceptionally fine and soft fleece that goes into making exceptionally fine and soft cold weather yarns. It's also known for its warmth, breathability, and moisture wicking properties. In fact, over the course of the last five years, athletic clothing companies have been producing Merino-based fabrics fabrics to put into their athletic clothing because of the exceptional moisture wicking properties as well as its ability to keep you cool all year long. Merino is really a magical fiber. In terms of things that you might want to knit with Merino wool, I would definitely stick with things that are going to sit close to skin and not necessarily be the more rugged or hard wearing of the items in your collection. Socks knit in Merino wool is actually rather common as most sock yarn in the independent yarn market is made with Merino wool. However, I would say that when it comes to the more harder wearing items, you're going to want to avoid something as soft and fine as Merino. Use Merino for its exceptional warmth and softness against the skin. But just remember, where there is exceptional softness and fineness in the yarn, there's also a lack of durability. So these are not going to be your outermost layers. They will be your innermost layers or things that you like to wear for comfort and style, not necessarily for durability and rugged wear. The next breed of sheep is one that you may be familiar with or at least have heard, and that is the Rambouillet. Rambouillet sheep are a fine wool breed that were developed in France. They are descendants of the Spanish Merino sheep and their fleece and fiber is highly regarded. In fact, the Rambouillet sheep actually gets its name from the Rambouillet estate in northern France. The breed was developed by the French monarchy, namely King Louis XVI, to improve the wool quality at the time. Rambouillet sheep were created by crossbreeding the Spanish Merino sheep with English long wool breeds. And through careful care and development of the breed, the Rambouillet sheep was born. And in the year 1840, the beloved Rambouillet sheep were 
introduced to the United States when 41 rams and 300 ewes were gifted to President Thomas Jefferson. Yarns consisting of Rambouillet fleece have very many of the same characteristics as Merino yarn. It is a fine wool and a soft wool. However, it is not quite as fine as Merino. It's slightly longer staple with a little bit more of a crimp, meaning that even though it is fine like Merino, it's slightly more durable. However, you're not going to want to use Rambouillet for your most hard wearing items. You're going to want to save that for your more durable and rustic yarns. So consider items you want to wear as base layers or things that you're simply wearing for that cozy knitwear comfort. The next breed of sheep is called the Blue Faced Lester Sheep. You may also see this referred to as BFL. The BFL breed originates from the northern regions of England and Scotland. It's known for its distinct bluish gray or black face and exceptional wool quality. Blue Faced Lester or BFL sheep produce long, lustrous, and silky wool with excellent insulation properties. This wool is excellent for knitting cozy, warm sweaters and outerwear. BFL also has a really lovely golden undertone and takes the dye beautifully. If you happen to purchase a skein of hand-dyed BFL yarn, you're in for a treat. It makes for the perfect canvas for a beautiful and rich colorway. If you've been diving down the rust wool rabbit hole, you may have come across Icelandic wool. You may be familiar with Plotolopi or Aleflos Lopi. You may even be familiar with the Icelandic sweater Lopapesa, which are beautiful colorwork yoke sweaters or sweaters that are knit in a traditional Icelandic style. Icelandic wool is renowned for its strength, durability, and warmth. Icelandic sheep are native to Iceland and they have been bred intentionally to adapt to the harsh and cold climate. So it's no surprise that their fleece produce yarns with similar characteristics. Icelandic sheep also have a distinctive and unique color range in their wool. And in the Icelandic language, there happen to be 100 words to describe the varying colors of Icelandic sheep. Icelandic sheep are also also known for their dual coated fleece, which includes a warmer inner layer referred to in Icelandic as the thel, and a more water resistant outer layer referred to as the tog. The combination of these layers make Icelandic wool ideal for cold weather conditions. Now, when it comes to what to knit with Icelandic wool, you're going to want to remember that this isn't known for its next to skin properties. A lot of folks might find Icelandic wool to be scratchy or prickly. So it's recommended that if you are going to knit a traditional Icelandic lopa pesa or simply a sweater with Icelandic wool to consider an undergarment to wear beneath the sweater. Now, if you're okay with relatively scratchy and prickly yarn, this may not bother you at all. And if you decide to pair your Icelandic wool yarn with something softer, you may notice that it tones down that prickliness just enough to be worn next to skin. But just know going into it that Icelandic wool yarns are not the softest. They are not the finest, but they are exceptional when it comes to durability and warmth. Another breed of sheep that is raised to withstand harsh conditions where they live are the Shetland sheep. Shetland sheep originate from the Shetland Islands of Scotland and have adapted to the harsh climate of the island environment. Shetland wool is fine and soft and provides excellent warmth and insulation and is commonly used for traditional Shetland Fair Isle knitting and cold weather garments. Shetland wool is also exceptional for outerwear and outer garments and things that need to be slightly more durable than softer wools such as Rambouillet and Blueface Lester. If you're just diving into the world of Shetland wool and you would like to try a fantastic yarn that consists of 100 percent Shetland wool, a really great place to start is Jameson and Smith, and I will link to them down below in the description box. The Corydale breed was developed in the 19th century in New Zealand, and it was actually developed by crossbreeding the Merino with the Lincoln, very similar to the Polworth sheep. The goal was to create a sheep that produced a fleece that was soft and fine like the Merino, but larger with the meat qualities that they needed in the Lincoln, making it a truly all-purpose sheep breed. But now Corydale sheep can be found worldwide and have adapted to a variety of climates. Corydale sheep produce a medium soft fleece that is suitable for cold weather garments and excellent for more hard wearing items. Because it's not an extra fine or even fine wool, it is a medium soft. You can work the fabric produced from this yarn a little bit more. So it's a great one for outer layers or mittens and hats, things that are going to be thrown on and functional. This next sheep breed is not one that I see often in independent yarn companies and especially not in large scale yarn companies, but it is a really interesting sheep breed because of its fleece characteristics. 
and that is the Jacob sheep. Jacob sheep are known for their striking black and white spotted fleeces, which can actually be used to produce some really special, naturally undyed yarns, as you can probably imagine. I like to imagine that the yarns produced from the Jacob sheep would be naturally marled, but it looks something more like this. In some instances, you definitely do see a really lovely marling there, but in other instances, it's just a really delicate blend of the black and the white, producing something that looks like a heathered gray. And I think that that's absolutely gorgeous. Jacob fleece is light, soft, and springy, and it has a variety of different staple lengths and micron counts. It is not a soft or a fine wool. It's a little bit more of a medium wool in terms of coarseness. Rustic would be a fantastic word for this. However, like I said, the micron count can range from soft to coarse, and the staple length can also range anywhere from three to seven inches, meaning that one Jacob fleece and yarn may be softer than another, so it's definitely something that you could feel in your hands for yourself to judge whether or not it would be to your tastes. But that would mean that you need to have access to Jacob yarn in person, and I know it is not the easiest yarn to come by. A little bit of sleuthing on the internet could definitely land you with something, and hopefully the description of the yarn would be suitable to provide you with an idea of how that yarn would feel. But I think the key thing for Jacob fleece here and yarn produced with Jacob fleeces is just its really unique color because of the black and white spotted nature of the Jacob fleece. And so I thought it was worth mentioning because it's not only sure to be a cozy yarn, it's just a really striking and visually appealing yarn as well. And that is because of its natural coloring. The last breed that I wanna mention here because it is one that you're sure to find in the independent yarn market is the New Zealand Polworth. Now Polworth sheep are native to Australia but have since become rather prevalent in New Zealand and you may actually see Polworth yarn referred to as New Zealand Polworth and that is simply because that is where that fleece originated. However, the breed itself originated in Australia and it is created from crossbreeding the Merino and the Lincoln very similar to the Corydale. As a result, the Polworth combines the softness and the fineness of the Merino with the added durability of the Lincoln lineage. Polworth typically falls in the medium fine range, making it warmer than Merino but but not as coarse as some of the other breeds. It also has excellent insulating properties, making Polworth an exceptional yarn to use to knit outerwear pieces like sweaters, hats, scarves, and gloves. And it's okay, you can use Polworth to knit things that are going to get a little bit more wear. I personally love using Polworth for socks, even if it's a 100% Polworth yarn. If you want a little extra durability, you can pair it with a silk or a nylon thread, but I find that it holds up pretty well on its own. Well, there you have it, folks. Eight sheep breeds to look for on yarn labels if you are looking to knit cozy and warm items for cold weather. Thank you so much for joining me today. This was an eye-opener for me, and I hope that you managed to take something away from this video. And if anything, maybe now you're more familiar with some of those sheep breed names that you happen to see on yarn labels. And I think that that has been one of my biggest takeaways from the research for this video, but the research I've done in the past as well, just as a yarn connoisseur, I find that now I can look at yarn labels, see the breed of sheep, and understand a little bit more about what to expect from that particular yarn. If you took value in this video or enjoyed yourself at all, definitely don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click that bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. And if you would like to further support the Wool Needles Hands channel here on YouTube, definitely consider checking out Patreon. There's lots of additional content over there now, as well as content coming in the next couple of days or so, plus in the future. And I would love for you to be a part of that community as well. If you decide to go over there and check it out. Thank you so much for your support. And if not, and you just choose to watch the videos as they are here, I appreciate you. Thank you. You being here makes all the difference. You are appreciated. Until the next time we meet on the knitting podcast coming out this Sunday, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.